Hello everyone, this is Travis Wright again with you on the Bare Metal to Private Cloud series. Welcome to the seventh installment of this eight-part series. Today we'll be talking about installing and configuring Orchestrator. Orchestrator is uh, actually, I think, by probably one of the easiest components of the System Center suite to install, so this session will actually be fairly short today. So to get going, the this next step that we're going to do here is we're going to deploy Orchestrator. And in this particular case, we're going to just deploy uh, the orchestrator deployment into a NLB cluster. So we'll have two orchestrator nodes, ORC1 and ORC2. And they'll both be used as runbook servers. They'll both be exposing uh, the web service as well as the website. And we'll get into the details on that in just a minute. And we'll also be deploying out the orchestrator database onto the SAN through the SQL Server cluster as well. So before we get started, let's just make sure we're on the same page as far as a few concepts go. Uh, the orchestrator management server is used to execute runbooks. Now runbooks are uh, basically automation workflows. So I can create a runbook out of um, different activities, and each activity represents uh, a portion of some automation. So for example, I might have an activity which gets a user out of Active Directory, and then I might have that followed by another activity which updates that user in Active Directory. And I can string these activities together into a, a sequence, and that constitutes a runbook. So the management server is responsible for executing those runbooks. It also provides console connectivity to the database. All the consoles for Orchestrator will connect into the management server, and the management server will then make the connection to the database and get and set data uh, out of the database there. And then you can optionally install a couple of other components on the management server, and that is the web service that service manager uses to connect to to submit uh, runbooks to be executed. And then other clients, of course, can use that web service as well. If you write some automation using some other tool or you want to hook it up to some other system, you can do that um, by writing code against that web service. And the management server has another component, which is the orchestration console, which is a web-based interface for analysts to sort of check in on the status of runbooks. Uh, and that's a standard IAS website. Now, Orchestrator also has its own DB. It's called Orchestrator. There's really nothing special there. It's just a standard SQL Server database. It's provisioned when you install your first management server in an orchestrator implementation, but uh, that's pretty straightforward. Now, as we've seen previously on some of the other NLB clusters that we've set up in the System Center bare metal to cloud deployment, uh, we'll be doing the exact same thing here with orchestrator where we set up a Windows NLB and uh, we'll have two nodes, ORC1 and ORC2, and all connections will go to the virtual cluster address or the virtual cluster name uh, rather than to the individual orchestrator nodes of that cluster. And that way we've got load balancing as well as uh, redundancy so that we can reboot one or the other of the nodes as we do patching and that sort of thing. Okay, so with that, let's just go right into the demo. I'll share out my desktop here with you. Uh, feel free to ask any questions along the way in the Q&A tool there, and I'll answer those as we go along. <clears throat> okay, so as we've seen in the other sessions in this series, I've just recorded ahead of time the steps involved so that I could cut out all of the pausing and waiting and that kind of stuff as, as we do the deployment. So here we go. We'll get started here with the first is to set up the first orchestrator management server. So we just run setup orchestrator.exe, click install. Now, Orchestrator requires the .NET Framework 3.5 SP1 in order to run the setup. So it'll prompt you here, and then it'll install it for you automatically. Enter the product key, accept the license terms. And here you can see these uh, optional components here. So first of all, whenever you install Orchestrator, you're always going to install the management server component. And then you can optionally choose to install the runbook server, the orchestration console, and web service. And then the runbook designer is the orchestrator console. So those are the optional components that you can choose to install along with the management server. In this case, I installed all of these components on both of the orchestrator servers. <clears throat> 
Okay. So now it's checking the prerequisites for us. And it'll detect that I don't have framework 4.0 installed and provides a link to the web where you can go and download and install that. In my case, I just installed it off of our network share. And here is telling me that the OOPS IIS role was not installed. So um, that's required for the orchestrator web service as well as the orchestration console. So I just checked that box there and it installed the IIS web role for me with all of the required features and, and so on, which is a really convenient feature. I, I wish we had that in all of our setups. Um, that makes it really easy for you. Now here on this screen, I'm just configuring the database server. So in this case, I'm pointing to the SQL cluster name. And uh, we're just going to click on test database connection here. That's good. And then on this next screen here, I have a choice to either create a new database or to use an existing database. So you would create a new database in this case because this is the first orchestrator server that we set up. And so we'll just, uh, oops, I think I accidentally skipped ahead there. Let me back up here. Okay, here we are. <clears throat> Okay, now on this, okay. All right, so we're, we're configuring the database server here. I think I, I missed something else, hang on. I'll make sure we don't miss anything here. Okay, so here's the service account configuration. So the service account configuration, this is just a standard Active Directory domain account. And in this case, I created an account in Active Directory called SVC Orchestrator. And uh, this is the account that we used by the Orchestrator Management Server to connect to the database. <clears throat> okay, and then here's where we specify the SQL cluster name. Okay, and then uh, here's where we specify to create a new database. And here we're specifying the users group, okay? So in this case, you can see that it defaults to creating a new group on the orchestrator management server called orchestrator users group. I recommend rather than using a local group like that to create and use a domain group in Active Directory. And that way uh, you can add that same domain group to each of the orchestrator servers and manage it through Active Directory. <clears throat> Okay, so in my case, I just set it to domain admins, but I'd recommend creating a special group for that. And then there we're giving that group access to use the Runbook Designer remotely. And then here we're configuring the, uh, back up here just a second. Here we're configuring the web service port and the orchestration console port. So these are the two ports that will be set up in IIS. They default to 81 and 82. Uh, unless you have some reason to change those, then you can just leave those as is. Select an installation location, opt into Microsoft Update and Customer Experience Improvement Program and Error Reporting. And we're ready to install. Okay, so obviously I've cut out all the time involved there. And that's a typo there. We're actually going to install the second orchestrator server here now. <clears throat> Okay, so now the only thing that's different between installing the first orchestrator cluster, or no, the, the cluster and the second one, is that when we come in here to configure SQL, we're going to choose to use an existing database instead of create a new database. Everything else is exactly the same. You choose the same uh, users group. You choose the same, um, you know, um, service account and so on. So everything else is exactly the same. Okay, now um, the, le the next step here is because we've got it set up with load balancing, we need to configure IS for load balancing. So there's a couple things you need to do here uh, is go to each server, go into advanced settings, and change the application pool from default app pool to <clears throat> this other app pool here, which is the orchestrator web feature. Okay, so do this on both IS uh, servers, and then we're going to create some SPNs for the service account. And we're going to do this for each node of the cluster 
as well as for the cluster name. And we're going to do it for the NetBIOS name and for the net and for the fully qualified domain name for each of those. So here we're doing set SPN a HTTP ORC1, Contoso SPC Orchestrator. Now, if you're using HTTPS, then you'd need to um, also do this for HTTPS protocol for each of these as well. So we did it for ORC1, now we're doing it for ORC2. And now we'll do it for the virtual cluster name, which is just ORC. So I skipped over setting up the cluster because we've already seen that a couple times in this series, but uh, if you want to, you can go back and look at that in some of the previous sessions of the series. And now we're doing it for each of the fully qualified domain names. And again, this is something you really only need to do if you are using an NLB in front of your orchestrator uh, nodes, if you have multiple nodes. <clears throat> Okay, and then there's for the virtual cluster name. And we're done creating those SPNs. Okay, and then there's um, one other tweak we need to make to the web service. And that's to go into the configuration editor here and you're going to pull down the drop down up there in the section. And I'll show you what you need to choose here. <clears throat> and choose Windows authentication underneath ser server authentication. You're going to change this to use app pool credentials equals true and apply that. And again, that's something that you do on um, both of the IIS servers. And then you're also going to, on each of the servers, on the orchestration uh, console, you're going to change Windows authentication to, um, let me just back that up there. That went a little fast. <clears throat> Right there, you're going to um, uncheck enable kernel mode authentication. So that's a feature that um, we can't have running in this case where we're um, using an NLB cluster. So just need to disable that. All right, so that's the end of uh, that. Okay, so then there's um, a question here. Can you split the management server from the runbook function? Uh, the answer to that is no, I don't believe so. You need to um, install a management server each time, and then the runbook function is, a, an, is an optional component. So you can't have a runbook server standing all by itself. It has to be with a, the management server component. <coughs> okay, And that's how it accesses the database. That's why it needs to be there. Um, and then next question was, uh, which session covered setting up the NLB? Uh, that We covered that in the service manager session as well as the operations manager session. So check that out. Um, I went through that twice. It's the exact same procedure. The only difference this time would be to use uh, different static IP addresses for each of the nodes of the cluster as well as for the cluster uh, itself. All right, let's see. Feel free to drop any other additional questions in here. Let's switch back to the PowerPoint deck. So this one's really straightforward. I mean, at this point, you have Orchestrator deployed uh, in a highly available configuration. You could, if you wanted to, deploy the Orchestration Console and Orchestrator Web Services onto maybe some existing IIS farm that you have. Uh, that's certainly a possibility. Um, you know, if you sort of wanted to scale it out that way or use an existing web server farm that you already have, uh, you could do that. Okay, I don't see any other questions popping in here, so I'll go on to discuss what the next steps are. So our final session will be this Thursday at 11 o'clock Redmond time, and at that time we'll be talking about the last step here, which is to integrate System Center. I've just put a list of some of the many things that we can do to integrate the various system center components. Uh, we'll see most of these in the session on Thursday. We'll talk about creating the connectors for the CMDB to Active Directory, Ops Manager, Config Manager, Orchestrator, and Virtual Machine Manager. We'll talk about creating data warehouse connectors from Service Manager to Operations Manager and Config Manager. We can talk about how to integrate Ops Manager and Virtual Machine Manager, and I'll, I'll show a demo of that. Uh, you'd want to be able to deploy out agents from Operations Manager to all your System Center servers so that you can manage System Center itself. 
and then we'd want to import the System Center MPs into Ops Manager and Service Manager to uh, then manage each of those System Center components through the agents, as well as be able to populate the discovered inventory of different System Center components into the Service Manager CMDB. And you would want to deploy all of the System Center integration packs into Orchestrator so that you could then automate things around System Center using Orchestrator. It's possible to manage multiple data protection manager servers from a central operations manager console. Uh, we haven't really touched on deploying data protection manager in this series, and uh, so I won't be able to demo that at, at that time, but that's something to be aware of. That's new in System Center 2012. And then lastly, you could connect app, app controller to virtual machine manager as well as up to Azure. So lots of different integration points there. We'll talk about those more in detail on Thursday. Uh, here's the details on that session as well as my contact information. If you have any questions on, on the Spare Metal to Private Cloud series, please feel free to reach out to me on Twitter or email, and I'll, I'll try to answer those questions. Um, and I'll pause for just one more second here to see if there's any other questions that folks have regarding uh, deploying orchestrator. Okay, so the question was, uh, wh why is the session so small? Um, you know, in this particular case, deploying orchestrator is really, it's pretty basic, so, um, it's, it's kind of a short one. If I had sort of known that it was going to be this short, I probably would have combined it with the integrating system center one. But um, since we already had everything all scheduled out, uh, we ended up doing a short one today. <clears throat> it also makes it a little bit easier for people to consume if they're catching it on a recording or something like that if the, if the session you know, length is a little shorter. So. Okay, with that, it uh, doesn't look like there's any other questions in the queue. So um, thank you very much for attending today, and we'll see you on Thursday for the final session of the series.